So next is about the method. Okay, the method to study the genetic variation. So this one I will go through it quickly. So this is a pre DNA sequencing. So although we know it's the double helix structure of the DNA, but it's impossible to sequence the DNA at that time. It's very difficult. So that's the reason why usually how they study is to use the gel erythrophoresis. In the last lecture, I show you the first milestone in a DNA study is a gel erythrophoresis. So this is a total extract of the DNA. So you, see, you don't really see anything, I just see the white things. So this is a DNA, okay, the genome. This size of the one pair of the uh, sequence, okay, nucleotide. It depends on the resolution of technology. So in 1965, someone spent a lot of time just to produce a sequence. Okay, it's an RNA molecule from, a, from East. Okay. And this is just a tRNA molecule. It's about less than 100 pesos. So in order to get one milligram of the tRNA, okay, they spent three years and use up to 90 kilogram of yeast. This gene is quite small, the tRNA is quite small, it's an RNA molecule, but usually for your chromosome it's very large. So the genetic variability among organisms can only study indirectly. Okay? So there are a few methods, you can use the isozyme, and also the DNA hybridization, RFLP, so for the isozyme analysis, it's a migration of protein under the influence of the electric field. Exactly like the electrophoresis, the molecule that they put in is a protein. Okay. <clears throat> so the separation is based on the size and also the charge of the protein. Okay. So this is an indirect way to study the genetic variability. Then after that is a DNA-DNA hybridization. It's a quantitative assessment of the relatedness. So they can estimate amount of the sequence divergence. Divergence is a difference. Okay. But they cannot say exactly what are the difference, where, how much different. Okay? They, know, they know how much different, but they don't know exactly where and how, 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 how is the difference. Okay? So they do not resolve the nature of the sequence variation. So they just spread the DNA. Okay. After that, mix them together okay. to cool it down to, to match to let them to RNA, okay. to bond together again. The next one is a recession fragment. This enzyme is discovered in 1970s. You know that the enzyme only cut a certain part of the sequence, right? Okay. So in one sequence, okay. maybe the enzyme only cut in two parts. Okay, one fragment eh, cut in two parts. Then, then in this case, you will have three fragments. Correct? So one, one sequence, the whole genome, they cut in three parts, they have one, two, three, three fragments. Another sample, the DNA extract, after you treat, treat it with a research enzyme, they only cut it in one place. In this case, you only have two fragments. Okay? But somehow everything is still in the tube, you cannot see it, right? But once you put in the retrophoresis, you run it, then you can see the difference. Okay? For the first sample, you have three fragments. For the second sample, you have two fragments. So that means that there must be at least one place in the genome is different. Okay? So this is how it looks like. So you need to use the erythrophoresis to check the result. Okay? So the limitation is you, re you really need, need large amount of the sample DNA. Okay? So this one is not involved the PCI yet, right? Okay? So there are other methods, I'm not going to go into detail. So there are methods to analyze the fragment, recession site, DNA fragment, okay? So for example, the microsatellite, mini satellite, okay? So these are the PCR beds. Okay? So you amplify certain region, okay? Using many different pairs of primer. Okay? You, you don't know where, where they attach, but somehow they, it's a one pair of primer, they amplify two regions, then you have two fragments. But in this case, you don't really need a lot of the material. Okay? In another, another sample, you only amplify in one region, then only one fragment. Okay? I think you, did, you heard about the microsatellite, mini satellite in your conservation genetic. Okay? And this will give you another type of data for you to analyze the population genetic. Okay? Then the variation in the conformation, the re recession site. 
variation. So there are different type of the method. So these are the name of the method. So these are the name of the method. Okay. And RAPD. So, but all of this, they don't tell you what is the main, what is the really difference, right? ABCG in terms of the nickel type. Okay. So the next thing that they, they do is to develop a technology which they can really read the, each of the nickel type. 